welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, let us discuss about obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, one of the commonly misdiagnosed case in our clinical practice. Whenever we see a type 2 respiratory failure in emergency room, we always diagnose it as mostly it is due to COPD. But many patients who are uh, falsely diagnosed as COPD can have obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. So we will uh, see what are the clinical features of uh, obstructive sleep apnea and uh, how can we make a diagnosis of uh, OSA in our clinical practice or how to suspect OSA uh, in our clinical practice. OSA is defined as episodes of partial or complete closure of upper airway that occurs during sleep and lead to breathing cessation. It's defined as a period of apnea or hypopnea more than 10 seconds. There are two important types of uh, sleep apnea syndromes. One is central sleep apnea, neural drive to all respiratory muscles and are transiently stopped during sleep. Other one is obst obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. It occurs due to the occlusion of the upper airways usually at the level of oropharyngeal palate level. So here you can see obstruction in the airway is obstructed and patient is unable to breathe during lying down on supine posture especially in the night time patient develops sudden onset of breathlessness that too patient can have episodes of stoppage of breathing that is called as apnea. So during that period patient's uh, respiratory system completely stops and patient's carbon dioxide level will increase. Patient can have all features of hypoxemia. Some patients can have sudden death also during that period. So this is obstructive sleep apnea and that will be sometimes misdiagnosed as acute breathlessness in the night due to cardiac failure because most of these patients can have associated hypertension, cardiac diseases, obesity. So it can be misdiagnosed as pulmonary edema at night time or these patients can have chronic type 2 respiratory failure and Sometimes when they are admitted to ER, we, we make a misdiagnosis as COPD with exacerbation. These patients can also have pulmonary edema or associated some airway obstruction. So that also possible. Some patients can have uh, asthma or COPD, but they also have obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. So it's a complex disease. It is associated with various other diseases. That's why most of the time this will be missed during the complete evaluation of the patient. It is characterized by repeated, repeated apnea episodes or hypopnea episodes where the airway collapses completely when the patient is lying down and it leads to cyclical hypoxemia. Apnea is defined as complete cessation of air flow more for more than 10 seconds. Hypopnea is partial air flow obstruction resulting in arousal from sleep. So in hypopnea patient gets up during sleep but apnea most of the time patients uh, will be sleeping. They may not notice that patient has he has developed uh, apnea episodes. But by, uh, bystanders or uh, the patient's uh, relatives, they may notice that patient is having problem during sleep. And daytime because of this hypoxemia and hypercarbia in the night and inadequate sleep during night, patient can have early morning headache, uh, lack of uh, concentration, like that problems patient can develop during daytime. The apnea hypopnea index is the number of apneas and hypopneas per hour of sleep as measured by 
a polysomnography that is sleep study. Uh, so during that study we can see what is the apnea hypopnea index. So during this obstructive event during sleep, alteration in intrathoracic pressure can produce sympathetic nervous system activation, system, systemic and pulmonary hypertension. So this can produce chronic pulmonary hypertension features like COPD or ILD patients and they can have high BP, they can have arrhythmias and associated complications like uh, hypoxemia and hypercarbia can produce uh, loss of uh, memory, lack of concentration, daytime sleepiness, all these things can be there in this type of patients. Risk factors are mainly obesity, then large neck circumferences, male gender, old age, snoring, like that uh, so many uh, risk factors are there but the most important thing is obesity and large neck. So risk factors we have already seen male patients, obese patients, alcohol, chronic alcoholism, sedative overdose, acromegaly, hypothyroidism, then familial. Now we can see the clinical features, patient, most of the patients can have loud snoring but snoring alone is not a feature of obstructive sleep apnea syndrome there are a lot of other causes for snoring but snoring is associated with OSA early morning headaches that is mainly due to uh, apnea and hypopnea leading to hypoxemia in the night time irritability impaired co cognitive function reduced work performances difficulty in concentration depression systemic hypertension. So most of these patients can have obesity, high BP and during night time they can have apnea episodes. So they can have increased BP during day time, reduced concentration and they can have some features of pulmonary hypertension and chronic airway disease. So they will be mostly uh, uh, diagnosed as COPD during their clinical evaluation if uh, histories are not completely taken. We can see here it is a cycle, patient develops daytime drowsiness, so night time they have uh, uh, good sleep but during that sleep patient will most of the time they go to apneic episodes that will produce hypoxemia. This hypoxemia can produce again daytime uh, sleepiness, lack of concentration, all these things. Then this hypoxemia can produce pulmonary hypertension that also leads to systemic hypertension, patient can develop uh, problems due to all these things, patient can develop heart attack, stroke, memory loss, diabetes, depression, insomnia, so many complications can produce by obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Now physical examination in emergency room or in OPD, modified malambati score you have to see that is 3 to 4 low visibility of posterior pharynx when the patient open mouth, retrognathia or increased overjet, top incisor teeth ahead of bottom incisors that is very important, lateral peritonsillar narrowing, macroglossia large tongue, tonsillar enlargement, elongated or enlarged uvula, high arched or narrow hard palate, nasal abnormalities like polyp, deviation of septum or turbinate hypertrophy. So all these things uh, can be associated with OSA. So this patient uh, who is uh, suspected to have OSA should have complete ENT evaluation before making proper diagnosis. So all the patients who is having suspected OSA should undergo detailed uh, ENT evaluation. Now diagnosis most of the time these patients uh, will not have proper diagnosis because the uh, it is an un underdiagnosed disease. Uh, obese patient who is coming with breathlessness most of the time with type 2 respiratory failure most of the time we diagnose it as COPD because these patients can have uh, type 2 respiratory failure, they can have wheeze they can have cardiac failure, they can have hypertension. So 
टाइप टू रेस्पिरेटरी फेलियर मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वी वी ओवर डायग्नोज इट एस सी ओ पी डी एस्पेली इन फीमेल पेशेंट्स ओबीज फीमेल पेशेंट्स इफ यू आर मेकिंग सी ओ पी डी वी आर टू थिंक दैट देर इज अनदर डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोज दैट इज ऑब्सट्रक्टिव स्लीप अपनिया एंड पेशेंट्स कैन हैव कैन प्रसन्न विथ ओबीसीटी विथ हाइपर टेंशन एट्रल फिब्रिलेशन कार्डियक फेलियर सो मेनी अदर Uh, misdiagnosed so so many other uh, complications can can uh, present with oise and also patient can present with uh, motor vehicle accidents because of uh, increased uh, sleepiness uh, during driving now the most important diagnostic modality in uh, oise is polysomnography that is sleep study so patient will be uh, allowed to sleep in a sleep lab sleep lab means uh, during sleep they will uh, assess patients uh, uh, breath uh, number of breaths saturation bp pulse everything all uh, physical activities will be monitored during the sleep so during the sleep patient, we can assess patients uh, number of breaths uh, saturation apnea episodes hypopnea episodes like that we can uh, uh, we can quantify all problems during sleep that is called as polysomnography so during polysomnography we can uh, see whether patient going to uh, hypopnea or uh, apnea episodes from that we can uh, make a diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea other important evaluations we have to do a complete ent evaluation pulmonary function test should be done to rule out obstructive airway diseases echocardiogram should be done to rule out rv hypertrophy pulmonary hypertension and rv failure so these are the routine investigation will be done in uh, obstructive sleep apnea abg mostly shows type 2 respiratory failure with chronic carbon dioxide retention with uh, compensation so that also can be done in emergency room now once you make a diagnosis of any type of breathlessness niv is the choice of ventilation in emergency room so whether it is pulmonary edema copd asthma or even in suspected osa we initially start niv but here niv means it's mainly continuous positive airway pressure ventilation or cpap ventilation so there is a choice of ventilation in uh, obstructive sleep apnea syndrome a uh, patient need to take this cpap during night time so if they use it continuously there will be improvement in uh, clinical features of oise the the disease may not completely disappear because it's a it's a structural problem but the complication which is uh, produced by the disease that is hypoxemia pulmonary hypertension or lack of sleep uh, sleep disturbances daytime insomnolence or daytime uh, hypertension all will be controlled by good sleep so this should be uh, given uh, this option should be given for all patients who is having osa after making proper diagnosis uh, once we start this uh, uh, cpap ventilation uh, initially we we may have to do it in uh, sleep lab itself then titration of the uh, cpap arrangement settings is needed uh, uh, in intervals so that can be tried then mandibular advancement devices can be tried in uh, minimal diseases palatal surgery nasal obstruction surgery all these things can be tried but the treatment of choice is always cpap ventilation now another important uh, thing uh, treatment uh, treatment should be done in uh, obstructive sleep apnea syndrome is weight reduction we know that obesity is a major cause for thick neck and produ- producing all the complications like osa and other features so weight reduction has got strong recommendation in the management of osa Uh, medication like modafinil that can be tried in patients who is having daytime sleepiness so that can be tried uh, but it is not a treatment for osa it only improves the 
daytime sleepiness then many patients require uh, follow up polysomnography the sleep studies uh, can be done during diagnosis and after uh, initial evaluation and uh, uh, start, uh, after starting uh, cpap ventilation for titration of the cpap ventilation parameters then we need uh, follow up sleep study and if the patient reduces weight there also we have to do follow up sleep study and we can see whether the patient has improved or not so these are the things we can try it in patients who is having osa so osa is mostly an underdiagnosed disease many patients who is having type 2 respiratory failure can have osa so whenever we see type 2 respiratory failure in osa most of the time we make a diagnosis of copd but copd can be there in smokers very commonly seen in smokers but those who are not having history of smoking and if they present with uh, type 2 respiratory failure and if they are obese we should have an alternative diagnosis that is osa otherwise also if the patient is very obese and if he tells about apneic episodes or uh, somebody tried to kill him during night time that may be osa thank you